Amen. Amen. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. This is indeed another day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be, get, and be glad in it. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. For he is indeed worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Before we get started, let's turn to your neighbor and say, and, and say, say, I'm glad to see you this morning. Yeah, turn, turn, turn to each other and say, say, I'm glad to see you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah, let, let, loosen up a little bit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Let us please, please stand and let us receive our uh, male choir. of reading, which is found in your bulletin. Coming from the book of Proverbs, the first chapter, the 27th through the 30th verse. 
If we have found it, let the church say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. And it reads as follows. <clears throat> when your fear cometh as desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. For they shall not find you. For they shall not find you. And do not choose the pure Lord. Altogether, they would not allow my counsel. They despise, they despise all my reproof. Our hymn of praise, great is thy faithfulness. Amen. to our deacons for devotion. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Black Chapel. Good morning. What a blessing it is to be a witness to another beautiful sunny day. You know, sometimes when you look around, we're either we're going into a storm, or if we're not already in a storm, or we're coming out of a storm. We see so much destruction, confusion, chaos throughout the land. But one thing that we do know is that God is in control. Amen. That he's in charge and, and we just need to trust him and stand on his word. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we yes, come to you this morning. Yes. Father, we come in the spirit of thanksgiving. Thank you, Father, Lord. first of all, we thank you for who you are. Thank you, Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as Alpha and Omega, first and the last, the beginning and the end. Father, we, we acknowledge you as the maker, creator, and sustainer of all things. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lying down last night and our rising up this morning, Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you for the, for the roof over our head and food on our tables, clothes on our backs, Heavenly Father. Thank you for giving us a mind and will and desire to come out and serve and worship you this morning. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for every individual and every household represented here this morning and, and every congregation, every church door that's open wide in your name. Father, we thank you for our pastor, Heavenly Father, in the 30 plus years that he's been with us, providing us with guidance, leadership, and saving souls over today. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us again yet another opportunity again to, to bless and to praise your holy name. Father, we pray to your blessing on those that are bereaved, the sick and afflicted. Heavenly Father, we lift up those in the hospitals, convalescent homes, nursing homes, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for the our military personnel, our political leaders, Heavenly Father, our law enforcement, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray that you continue to bless them and lead them, Heavenly Father. Father, we pray for our youth, our young people, Heavenly Father, particularly those that are leaving home for the first time, Heavenly Father. We pray that you watch over them and keep them in your lives, and Heavenly Father, and guide them and, and continue to protect them. Father, we pray that you forgive us for our sins. Just take every single sin and cast it into a sea of forgetfulness. We may sin no more than kind of children that you have, uh, have us to be. Father, now as the as a man coming forward, our pastor coming forward this morning, Heavenly Father, break the bread of life. We pray that every year will be a listening year, Heavenly Father, and that we will receive, receive your word, Heavenly Father, and that you continue to anoint him with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Heavenly Father, and that we may take the word and apply it to our everyday life and live according to thy will. Father, we pray, pray that you continue to lead and guide us and wait for you to help us to go, Heavenly Father. Father, we Again, we just thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung, bled, and died for our sins, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the finished work of the cross, Heavenly Father. Father, because he died, we have been redeemed. We have been forgiven for every single solitary sin. We thank you for the blood that was shed and the body that was bruised, Heavenly Father. Father, we just thank you. We can never thank you enough. We honor and we praise you, Heavenly Father. Now, as Father, as we proceed to his service this morning, we pray that it will be done in the spirit and the manner that is pleasing in your sight. And bless every auxiliary reverend and every individual that's involved with the service this morning, Heavenly Father. Here's another blessing we ask in that body and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. This now concludes our devotion. you all to know in the midst of everything that we've been going through yes, that Jesus will be a fence around you That's right. That's right. you have to allow him to be that fence because he is a fence around all of us Yes, sir. 
I know you can. I know you will. Fight my battle. If I keep still. Yeah, Lord. I know you can, I know you will, fight my battle, yeah Lord, be a fist, I need you to govern me Lord Jesus, I need you to keep me, I need you right now Lord, I need you Jesus, I'm not ashamed, Jesus. I need you to govern my mind. I need you, Jesus. Well, 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 I need you. Yeah, Jesus. Yes, sir. Protection. Protection. Oh, wait. Protection. Protection, oh no, no way, Jesus, oh yeah, Lord, mm, I need you, how many of you want to be a fence around you, mm, yeah, oh yes, Lord Jesus, mm, be a fence, around me, Jesus, I need you, I'm not ashamed of you, Jesus, I know you can, Jesus, I know you will, Jesus, how many of you need him to be a fence around you, do you need him to be a fence around you, well, well, I know he will, he'll be a fence around you. He'll lead you, guide you, protect you. He'll be a fence tall around you. I know he will. I need him, I need him, I need him. I need you, Jesus. I need you. I need you, Jesus. I need you right now, Jesus. I need you to be my protection. I need you to guide me. I need you right now, Jesus. I'm not ashamed, Jesus. I need you to bow the hand of the enemy. He'll be a fence. He'll be a fence. Yes, he'll be a fence. He'll be a fence all around. You. I know he will. He'll be a man. He'll be a man. Told him around you. My, 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 my. Protection. My guidance. He'll be a man. He'll be a man. All around. Well, well, well. How many of you need him to be a fence? Do you want him to be a fence? Protection. 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 All on the way. Protection. 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 All on the way. All on the way. Along the way, along the way, Jesus, I need you. Yeah, be a fence. I need you to be a fence, Jesus. I need you to be a fence. He's 
a fence around you, it doesn't matter what comes your way. Doesn't matter when sickness come, he'll be a fence. Doesn't matter when the storms come through, he'll be a fence. Doesn't matter what happens to you, all you got to do is trust him. If you believe him, if you keep your hand in the God's hand, he'll be a fence. How many you need him to be? He'll be a fence all around you. He'll be a fence. He'll be a fence all around you. I know he's a fence. I need him to be a fence. I need him to be a fence. I buy my hands of the enemy. Buy my hands of the enemy. He'll be a fence all around you. He'll be a fence all around you. Every day. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many of you can testify that Jesus has been a fence? Is that I know I'm not the only one. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Mayor Choir. Uh, now is the time that we acknowledge our visitors. Those who are in visitors, those who are visiting us for the first time. And it may not be your first time, but we still want to greet you, acknowledge you in the name of our Lord. Will all of our visitors please stand? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother and sister. Amen. He will greet you later on at, on, on, his, on his own accord. Um, on behalf of our pastor, our first lady, and our church family, though if you are visiting with us here, in, whether here in the sanctuary or by way of the live stream, we want to greet you and welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray that something is said, something is sung, but most of all, something that will be preached will be a strength to your walk and will bring you closer in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And may God bless you. May God keep you. Come again. And before we proceed on to our, uh, to our announcements, uh, we do um, have a candidate here. Um, hmm? Okay. I have uh, uh, Brother Criddell Calhoun. Would you come forward? Good morning, Black Chapel. Uh, Pastor Neil, I, I'm just glad to be here with you. Um, as most of you may know, uh, there's an election on August the 8th. And that's everybody from constable to governor will be running in that election. And I'm running for re-election to District 3, Hines County Supervisor. And I need your help in that effort. Uh, I've worked tirelessly trying to improve Hines County over the last two and a half years. Now, I can, uh, three and a half years. I can tell you, it is, has been tough. Uh, everything has gone wrong. Of course, we had COVID and, and we've been under an emergency almost the entire time. And what I'm saying is, we did a lot to get things done. We've resurfaced many streets, and uh, we know that's the city's job, 
but the county came in to help because the city was not doing all that it sh should have been doing. So we came in to help. And now we had a problem with our jail down in, in Raymond. And we are building a new jail. That, that, jail, that jail was built bad 30 years ago. And for some reason, nobody thought that we needed to get a new jail. But when I came in, I said, we're not going to kick the can down the road any further. We're going to get a new jail. So that's, they, they're breaking ground, uh, plying trees up down on McDowell and Gallatin right now. So we are on the way, uh, but, but you have to re-elect me in order to get this finished. Amen. On August the 8th, I, I need your prayers. I need your vote. Go to the poll. Make sure you take everybody with you. We are going to get things done in Hines County. We'll continue to work for you. Amen. Thank you all very much. And on August 8th, we look to see you. Thank you so very much. Good morning, Black Chapel. Morning. Our announcements are as printed on your bulletin number one. All auxiliary leaders are asked to meet in the prayer room immediately after service for a short meeting. Ordination of deacon service will be held immediately after regular morning service on Sunday, July the 2nd, 2023. Congratulations to our upcoming deacons. Amen. Also, please contact one of our named um, chairpersons below. If you are ill, Deacon Tony Latiker, uh, Chairman of the Deacons, and Deacon Avon Brown, Chairman of our Trustees. Also, our sick and shut-in list. Um, before that, do we have any birthdays coming up this week? Any anniversaries? Well, happy birthday to the members that are not here that have birthdays this week, and happy anniversary to the members that are not here that have anniversaries this week. Our sick and sh um, shut in our prayer list, uh, Sister Jacoria Love, that's the daughter of um, Deacon and Sister Veranda Love. She's at St. Dominic's Hospital. Sister Dorcas Thickpen, hospitalization of her sister, Rachel Curry. Sister Janice Cavett, um, also keep in prayer, Brother Daniel Bennett. Um, Sister Mary Cooper, mother of Dennis Williams, Deacon Charles Bale. Also, um, the nephew of Mother Wyndham and Deacon Wyndham, Tyler, uh, the, wife, the husband of Mother Curry, Brother Curry, Joshua Henderson, Sister Jessie Bell Williams, mother of Curtis Watson. Amen. Also, with sympathy, Lester Watkins and the Carter family and the demise of Sister Barbara Carter, funeral services will be held Saturday, July the 1st at 11 a.m. here at the church. All members, if you can, please be in attendance to support our loved ones, our church members. Also, Sister Bridget Reed and family, the demise of Brother De Dante Reed, who was funeralized on yesterday. Please keep our bereaved families in your prayers. Also, keep our sick and shut-in in your prayers. Those who we know about, those who we not may know about as a church, but you know about as an individual, please keep our church members in your prayers daily. We need them. Thank you so very much.
your trust in God. Put your trust in God. I found out you can't hurry God. I found out you can't hurry God. 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 May not come when you want him. May not come when you need him. God is always there. God is always there. Let him in your heart. Let him in your mind. Let him in your soul. Let him take control. Let him take control. Let him take control. Every day of the week. Every day of the month. You can't hurry God. You can't hurry God. You can't hurry God. You can't hurry God. Can't nobody do me like. 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 Can't nobody do me like Jesus. 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 You just wait on God. You just wait on God. If you wait on God. If you wait on God. If you wait on God. God will make it all right. If you wait on God. If you wait on God, God will make it all right. Do it every time. Do it every time. If you wait on Him, have you tried God? Have you tried God? When they tell me your day, then they tell me your day. Somebody said Monday. Somebody said it was a Tuesday. Somebody said it was a Wednesday. Somebody said it was Thursday. Somebody said it was a Friday. Somebody said it was a Saturday. But let me tell you my day. Let me tell you my day. Late one Sunday evening. Late one Sunday evening. Late one Sunday evening. Late one Sunday evening. I found my joy. You can hurry God, you can pay my boy I remember the day or the night that the Lord laid his hands on you. <laughs> I remember my day. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Brother Cross. Looks like the extra. Some of the deacons come down if you would help out with the offering. We are now at the point of our program where everyone can participate. Tithes and offering. It's time when we bless the Lord with what, what He has blessed us with. As I've always heard, it's better to be on the, on the receiving on the blessing end than the receiving end. It's a blessing to give. As you know, we have numerous ways of receiving contributions. The um, if you're not able to worship with us in person, there's a drop box that's available 24/7 on the west end of the building, Amen. and also the Gilder Fly. Give the file link is available. At this time, we're in the hands of our urchins.
Let's all please stand. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father. Lord, first of all, we come to say thank you. Lord, we just thank you. If we had 10,000 tongues, they would be insufficient for all that you have done for us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for just simply just waking us up this morning. Now to see another day that you did not promise us, another Sunday morning to come together and worship and praise your holy name. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, who shed his blood on Calvary, his precious blood that washes away all of our sins, that we may have the right to the tree of life. We thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together, worship and praise your holy name. Lord, we thank you for our pastor, his family, continue to bless them right now. Those who may be going through sickness right now. Those who are on our prayer list right now. Bless them. Heal. Deliver. Set free right now in the name of Jesus. Those who are going through bereavement right now. Uh, the Carter family. Uh, the Bell family. Amen. Man, the... The family yesterday that we funeralized yesterday, we, we lift them up right now. Those we may not know, comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. We lift up those who, may be, who are hungry, those who are homeless, those who are incarcerated, those who are in mental institutions. We lift, we lift them up right now. In, in, rehab, in rehabilitation centers. We lift them up right now. We lift up this offering. Bless those who gave. Bless the ones who wanted to give but had not. Bless them that they were able to give next time. Multiply and divide in a way it will be used for the building of your kingdom. Where's all these blessings in your son Jesus' name. We pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 All things. All things come of thee, O oh Lord. Hand of thy own have we
said that his name shall be called Jesus. Jesus. Thank God. Just for the name. You know, every name has a meaning unto it. Some of us may not know the meaning to our name. But there should not be a living soul who threads upon the face of the earth who don't know the meaning of the name of Jesus. Because I don't believe that there isn't a person in this earth who hadn't called upon it. 
for some reason or another. At some point in time in one's life. Oh, you know what the name of Jesus means. Because you have found yourself in such a situation where as that. The substance behind the name of Jesus was needed. And you cried out. The name of Jesus takes on many meanings. And whatever the need of your moment may be. The, the sufficiency of it is found woven into the fabric of the name of Jesus. A name which stands higher than any other name. When one drop of water falls into the ocean. It increases the entire content of the ocean. No matter how large that ocean may be. <clears throat> when one, just one single drop of water falls into that ocean, that one single drop of water increase the content of that entire ocean. You can go out and buy a 20 pound box of salt. And remove just one grain from that box. And that one grain will reduce the volume of that entire box. One tick of a second hand on a clock brings an entire year, 365 days, unto its end. Just one tick. on the second hand of a clock brings that entire year unto its end and begin a new one. It represents the end of the old and the beginning of a new. Little things can make great differences. Don't you ever allow yourself to feel insufficient pertaining to any subject matter. To any subject matter. Because the grace of God added to you makes you sufficient. No matter how insufficient you may feel when you should not feel that way. Just a little bit of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Just the calling of his name. Can make you sufficient. May not sound like much. Just to call on the name of Jesus. But I dare you. No matter how heavy the load may be. In spirit and in truth. Call that name. Jesus added to any situation. Makes you sufficient. What an additive God has supplied us with when he supplied us with Jesus. And he declared that at the name of Jesus, 
Every knee. Must bow. And every tongue must confess. That he is. Lord. Lord. And that same Jesus made a promise unto those who follow after him. And that promise was that I would never leave you. Never, ever. So those who know the Lord and the part of their sin should never feel insufficient. No matter what the nature nor the size of the challenge, I would never leave you nor forsake you but I will be with you always until the end of days and the end has not yet come so Jesus is in this place just because you're in this place And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So let us never part those doors with that insufficient spirit wrapped around us. Leading and guiding us to be in question or in doubt pertaining to any subject matter. Because you've made it to the Lord's house. <laughs> And the Lord is able to keep his house. And all of the content. Which is found there in. Oh what a privilege and oh what a blessing it is. To take advantage of Sunday morning's opportunity. To enter. Into the Lord's house. Just to have been blessed to be able. And how many out there in Wonderland have been blessed to be able, but yet and still you're not in the Lord's house. The house of refuge. The house of healing. The house of deliverance. The house of peace. The house of joy. The house of salvation. You're talking about living beneath your privilege. If you know the Lord in the pardon of your sin, and if you are alive, you have the opportunity to know. And if you're not taking advantage of those two privileges, to know and the opportunity to know you are living beneath your means. Saved but living in spiritual poverty. Just because you're absent from the presence of the Lord's house. Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you. Forsake not the assembling. Of yourselves. Little thing. The Lord is everywhere. The Lord is in all places. He's in my house. He's in my car. He's on my job. He's out there in the streets. Yes, the presence of the Lord is everywhere, Amen. but not his will. God does not will you to be in a place where he will you not to be in. Not his will. Our wealth is found woven in the fabric of God's will. You secured your salvation by saying yes. 
But all the spiritual benefits that comes along with salvation are still up for grab. Right. The presence of God is everywhere, but not his will. Yes. Amen. It is not his will that any should perish. That's word. Amen. That's and when you're found walking outside of the will of God, you are perishing because you're living beneath your spiritual privilege. Amen. The things that God will you to have, you're turning and walking away from. Keep the seventh day holy. Amen. And God's word is holy. And it instructs us to forsake not the assembly. There is nothing little about God's word. Amen. Every request, every promise, every will, every desire, that he has extended out unto the people of God are priceless. And we have no idea what's found woven into the fabric of his family. That prayer that we've been praying for years That blessing that we gave up on. <laughs> that healing, that deliverance. Yes, yes. That we're supposed to be patiently awaiting on. If you're not waiting inside the will of God, your waiting is in vain. Amen. I don't care what your father willed you when it's time for the reading of the will if you're not there. It's going to wait on your presence. It's, it's right where it's supposed to be. But you're not. Amen. And you're not going to become a recipient of that will until you place yourself where the will will you to be. Amen. Wealthy, but yet living beneath your privilege. Let's give this choir another great round of applause. They have truly blessed our hearts once again through song. And we thank God for the lyrics of gospel song. For there are divine truths which are found woven in the text of them. Messages. Enlightenment, strength, courage, faith. All the spiritual nourishment that God wills for us to feed off of should be found woven into the fabric of a gospel song. And we thank God for all of our ministers of music here at Black's Chapel. Amen. Brother Pendleton. Amen. This morning. Amen. Who's keeping it gospel. Amen. Sister Ellis, Sister Thickpen. For keeping it gospel. Our scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Second Kings, and 
let us look at the sixth verse. The sixth chapter, rather. The sixth chapter of the book of Kings, Second Kings. And we're going to start reading at the eighth verse. The book of Second Kings, the eighth through the eighteenth verse. And it reads as follows. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took up counsel with his servants, saying, In search and search a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware, thou pass not such a place, for thy the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there, not once nor twice. Therefore the king, the heart of the king of Syria, was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elijah, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore he sent he thy horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and encamped the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, and behold, an host encamped the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servants say unto him, Elias, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they be with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, <clears throat> 
I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, a mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And when they came down to him, Elijah prayed unto the Lord and said, Smit this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness, according to the word of Elijah. What a word. What a God. What a faith. Same God. Elijah and his servant are going on home to glory. But our God is still holding fast to his promise unto us. In that I will never leave you, nor forsake you. But I will be with you for all the days of your life. And the 16th verse, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. So let us think on this thought. When the Lord is with you, when the Lord is with you, We can't say that enough. We cannot make that statement enough. We cannot hear that saying being said enough. If we had a recorder that recorded just that statement alone. And you plays earplugs in your ears. With it playing all night long, you still would not have heard that saying said enough. When the Lord is with you. Because that means everything. Nothing lies beyond your reach nor your grabs. Nothing. When the Lord is with you. We find in our scripture reading this morning. where the prophet Elijah and one of his servants were on their way to Jordan. When they stopped off in the city of Dothan to lodge, To rest, to eat, and to sleep. And while they slept, the king of Syria, their enemy, had his army to surround. 
the entire city. And when Elijah's servant awakened that next morning and went over and looked out of his window. And I wonder this morning, Black Chapel, have you ever had a good meal, a good supper? And after eating that good meal, you watch your favorite television show. And when it was time to go to bed, you went to bed and you had one of the best restful nights of your life. But as soon as you woke up that next morning and opened your curtains and looked out your window, all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff was just lined up waiting on you. Robbed you of your peace, your joy, and your happiness. When Elijah's servant awakened and went over to the window and opened up his cage, he realized that the entire Syria army had encamped all around. And he went running to the room where Elijah slept. Crying out, wake up, Elijah. Wake up, master. Master, wake up. For we are surrounded by our enemy. And we're going to be slow. And when Elijah awakened and heard his servant's report, the first thing that Elijah did was he, he, he lifted up his eyes, he lifted up his spirit, and he lifted up his faith toward heaven. And he cried out, Lord, open the eyes of my son that he may see that they that are with us are more than those who are with them. Open up the eyes of my servant that he may see that you have an invisible army of angels encamped all around the mountaintop waiting for the command child. And Black's Chapel, just like Elijah, when we find ourselves caught up between a rock and a hard place, when we find ourselves out on the battlefield with our enemies all around us, the first thing we should do is look fast our eyes toward heaven, our will toward heaven, our spirit toward heaven, our faith toward heaven. Because when you're in good relationship with heaven, everything is going to be all right. Don't stop looking toward heaven because when you're in a good relationship with heaven, everything is going to be all right. Because God has a, a legion of invisible forces scattered all around you. Legion of invisible forces encamped all around. Because our God knows that life is inhabited with all kinds of uncertainties, with all kinds of surprises, with all kinds of threats, with all kinds of disappointments, and with all kinds of unresolved issues. You see, life is neither pain nor pleasure, but rather life is serious bitterness. Life is, some of you should have done live long enough to know that life is not pain nor pleasure, but life is serious business. And sometimes it takes our tomorrow's experiences to make us realize just how blessed and highly favored we were doing our yesterday's experiences. Let me say it again. Sometimes it takes our tomorrow experiences to make us realize just how blessed and highly favored we were doing our yesterday's experience. And today is our tomorrow's yesterday. So no matter what you may be experiencing in the today chapter of your life, always know that I'm blessed and and I'm highly favored. I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. Why? Because I'm being kept by the Lord. <laughs> a 
And just like Elijah, when the Lord is with you, don't you ever accept failure. Don't you ever accept defeat as an end result. As an end result. Because neither your failure nor your defeat have within their capacity the authority to determine your end results. But your failures and your defeats have within their content, knowledge, wisdom, and experience that we are to extract and apply to our next attempt. Just like with Elijah. Don't you ever feel. Don't you ever be allow yourself to be intimidated by your lack of personal resources. Don't you ever allow yourself to be intimidated by your lack of personal resources. Because just like with Elijah, God has commissioned, commanded, and gave you authority over all of your faculties, over your eyes, over your ears, over your tongue, over your hands, over your feet, over your mind, over your spirit, and over your heart. And your man priority in life, your main assignment in life is to lead all of your faculties into becoming instruments of righteousness, instruments of godliness, instruments of holiness, instruments of faith, instruments of worship, and instruments of praise. Because our God dwells in the habitats of our praise. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Let me say it again. Our God dwells in the habitats of our praise. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is liberty. And when the Lord is with you, he always provides you with the base that is needed for the working of a miracle. Did you know that? A miracle for you doesn't have to be as far away as you think it is. No matter how hopeless or helpless your case may appear to be, and you know you're in a dying need for a miracle. A miracle doesn't have to be as far away from you as you think it is. Because when the Lord is with you, the Lord always supply you with the base which is needed for the working of a miracle. Case in point. When Simon Peter and the other disciples had been out on the Sea of Galilee fishing all night long and they had caught nothing and right around that next morning they saw Jesus walking along the seashore Jesus had came into their presence. They saw Jesus walking along the seashore and Jesus cried out to them have ye in it meat? And Peter's response were, no, Lord, we've been out here toiling all night long, and we've caught nothing. we caught nothing. And Jesus' response for Peter was, launch your ship. Launch your ship out into the deep, and then cast your net on the other side of the ship. And when Peter launched his ship out into the deep and cast his net on the other side of the ship, the Bible say the draw was so heavy, the catch was so heavy until it almost sunk the ship. And Peter had to summon for another ship to offload some of his fish, to offload some of his blessing. Tell me, Black Shepherd, has the Lord ever blessed you with a ship sinking blessing before? Have the Lord ever blessed you for a ship sinking blessing before? Have the Lord ever spoke a word in your spirit telling you about how he was getting ready to bless you? How he was getting ready to elevate you? How he was getting ready to promote you? How he was getting ready to anoint you? And you wanted to tell someone what God had told you. But you felt in your intellect that if you told someone what God had told you, they were going to think that you've lost your freaking mind. You're freaking, but you felt in your spirit that if you didn't tell it, God wasn't going to bring in his manifestation. Not that God needed someone else's help. Not that God needed someone else to believe along with you. But God wanted you to offload the knowledge of your blessing to someone else. So that he could have a witness. So that he could have a witness. So that once he brought it into manifestation, you would be able to tell you, tell him, didn't I tell you God was going to do it? Didn't I tell you God was going to move it? Didn't I tell you God was going to fix it? There it is. There it is. 
There it is. When the Lord is with you, he always supplies you with the base which is needed for the working of a miracle. When Moses when Moses had led the children of Israel out of bondage from down in Egypt land, and he had led them to the banks of the Red Sea, couldn't go forward, and God knows he couldn't turn around. Mountains to his right and mountains to his left. Red Sea out front and Pharaoh's army closing in from the rear. Moses had found himself caught up in the midst of a Red Sea experience. Now a Red Sea experience is when you find yourself caught up in the midst of a situation Situation. Why well, ask that any decision that you can make is going to be the wrong decision. Any path that you take is going to be the wrong path. Caught up in the midst of a Red Sea experience. You see, if Moses had tried to scale the mountains, they would have fallen to their death. If he had tried to swim the sea, they would have drowned. If he had tried turning back, he would have been onslaughted by Pharaoh's army. He had found himself caught up in the midst of a Red Sea experience. And all the children of Israel started out of the crowd. Moses were not their graves in Egypt. You brought us out here to die. Why didn't you just leave us in Egypt? Leave us in Egypt. And then the word of the Lord spoke to Moses. You see, when God is with you, he always supply you with the base which is needed for the working of your miracle. The word of the Lord came to Moses and asked Moses, what is that you have in your hand? What is that you have in your hand? And Moses said, it's my rod. It's my rod. And God say, by God, and stretch it out. Stretch it out and open up the banks of the Red Sea. When God is with you, he always supply you with the base which is needed for the working of your miracle. You see, you plus God and your faith and your faith add to your capacity, the ability to make impossibilities actual. When God is with you, he always adds to your base the necessary measure that are needed for the working of a miracle. You do what you can do, and God will do what you can't do. You do the possible, and God will do the impossible. You do the natural, and God will do the supernatural. Meaning what? Take all of your problems. Take all of your troubles. Take all of your trials. Take all of your tribulations. Take all of your enemies to the altar and put a praise on them. Put a praise on them. Put a praise on them. Because God dwell in the habitat of our praise. When God is with you, he always supplies you with the necessary base which is needed for the working of your mirror. Take it to the altar in faith. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. You plus God with your faith add to your capacity, the ability to bring into manifestation whatever the subject of miracle you need to take place. You have the base. You are the base that God builds the miracle from. this Bible. God always needed a seed. God always needed a root. Lord, open the eyes of my servant that he may see that they that are with us are more than those who are with them. Open the eyes of my servant that he may see that you have a legion of invisible forces in camp all around the mountaintop waiting on the white child. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism, the door of the church is open. If you hear this morning, will you call? Will you call? Will you call? You plus God in faith add to your capacity, the ability to make impossibility, to bring into manifestation the miracle of your need. 
God always supplies us with the base which is needed for the working of a miracle. Because God has dealt unto every man a measure. A measure. May not have as much as you would like to have or you think you need to have. Well, if you want to increase it, cease off the word. Because faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. And how can you hear without the preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent by God? Little things. Little things. Things that we look up and, and look at and, and characterize as being miniaturized. Insufficient. Not needed. Not necessary. But if God has spoken on that why, it means everything. Because it carries along with it the power of the will of God. The manifestation of the will of God. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. If you're here this morning, will you come? Will you come? The day you hear my voice. Heart not thy heart. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, or child, just hear my voice and open up their door, I will come in and I will suck with you. Let us not walk away from this service. Whether you're present or whether you're viewing, let us not walk away from this service with a closed door syndrome. Open up and allow him interest into you. God's greatest will toward humanity is that humanity will open up the door of his heart and invite him in. Everything besides that is secondary. Second day. I say unto our viewing audience, if something has been said or something has been done throughout the activity of our Sunday morning worship service that has influenced God to speak a word into your spirit, to speak a word into your heart, into your desire, and give you the unction to become a part of this minister here at Black's Chapel. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. All you have to do is key into our comments section, the inbox, your name, your telephone number, and the word virtual member. And I will personally contact you. And we will process your situation from there. The door of the church is open. By way of letter, Christian experience, or candidate for baptism. The door of the church is open. The door of the church is open. Oh, we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. To keep the door of his will open. Until the last breath. And until the last heartbeat. That our lungs inhale and exhale and our heart give rhythm to it. But let it be known. There will become a last beat and a last breath. And if you hadn't before, that last beat and that last breath closes the door unto the will of God. That last beat and that last breath works 
and assigned work that God has assigned to each. And that is to close the door unto his will. And those who are on the other side of the door, a voice will cry out, go away. For I know you not. Oh, hallelujah. I wouldn't tell you nothing but the truth. Because I can't afford to be held accountable for the manifestation of any of them. But God can. It's God's truth. And God is able to bring it to manifestation the truth of it. Not I. I would not tell you anything about God that God didn't say about himself. Because all I know about God is what God has told me. Nothing more. Nor less. Because there's another spirit out there. Who is able to transform himself to appear. Even as an angel of light. So beware of those angels of light. That too often visits the people of God. With all kinds of messages. With all kinds of stuff to titillate your itching ears. And they can't support any of it. But the will of their master is being done. The deceiver. The punisher. The devil. I would not tell you anything about God that God didn't tell you himself. So when you come here at Black Chapel, you may not hear much of the stuff you want to hear. It's more darkness. We have the truth, though. But when you come into the Lord's house, it's not about hearing what you want to hear. It's about hearing what you need to hear. It's always about what you need to hear. When you hear enough about what the Lord had to say, he said, I will even give unto you the desires of your heart. Not so much that what you want, but he'll give you the want to own the want the things that he will you to have. That is what the desire of your heart means. Not but that he's going to ever give you everything that you want, but he will give you the desire to own and want the things he will you to have. And that serves the same purpose. But it comes with God's approval. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, thanks. Praise the Lord, thanks. Amen, amen, amen. To our pastor and Black Chapel family, we have two coming out on the Christian experience. And we have several coming for special prayer. To our pastor and Black Chapel family, we have Sister Michelle Martin coming on the Christian experience. Sister Martin, may the Lord continue to bless you and help to keep you with those blessings and graces and thank you for having me with us this morning on our worship service. Do you desire to become a full-fledged member of the Black Chapel and Sierra Rapid Church family? I do. Are you willing to obey the rules and regulations that govern this church? Yes. Are you willing to come when the church asks you to come and go when the church asks you to go? Yes. Are you willing to support the church both spiritually and financially? Yes. Do you offer your own church this morning just to minister? Most of God's family, Sister Martin, who come by way of Sister Miss Blue, to become a full pledge member of the Black Chapel and Sierra Baptist Church family. They will have to learn home fellowship, but she should have all rights and privileges as any other member. Are you ready to vote? Ready. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Aye. Cast in this favor, we'll go. Amen. To our pastor and Black Chapel family, we have Brother Marvin Starks. Coming on the Christian experience, Stocks. Marvin Stocks, S T A R K S, Stocks. Stocks. Marvin, Brother Stocks, do you desire to become a full pledge member of the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family? I do. Are you willing to obey the rules and regulations that govern this church? Yes. 
told them to call me to check out some guitar and told them to check out the internet. Yes. So they can for, so they can spiritually and financially. Yes. But all of you are just looking for a possible promotion. Stop them from by way of personal appearance or come forward to raise money to buy check Mr. Bradford Church family, not the right hand of fellowship. He prepared all rights and privileges to bring other members. You ready to vote? Ready. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Ayes have the motion been carried. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I would just like to say, we thank God for folks. We thank God for folks. But This is the day commemoration, first year of that anniversary. Correct. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> you talking about starting out the first year, the second year, in fashion. It doesn't get more fashionable than this right now. <laughs> and, and, and I would just like to say, not showing any form of favoritism, but I say it once and I say it a thousand times. When God firstborn comes home, you know, the scripture tells us that when a, when a sinner says, Jesus, the Lord and Savior, the angels of heaven rejoice. Yes. The same goes for the firstborn, and that is man. When man comes home and says, yes, those same angels that rejoice in the presence of God also rejoice when his firstborn. And God gave a commission and a command to us men yes. to go out into the vineyard and keep it and dress it and subdue it and keep things in order. And it just, my heart just, just, just bleeds with joy, with joy when God's firstborn comes home. We can use whose doors are open to that firstborn. We need that male figure. We need that male presence in all things because it dominates. It leads. It guides. And it commands because God has ordained the work to be done. And I commission you to lead, to guide, and command and demand the things of God towards the male pastor. We have with us Mother Carter's, Papa Carter's family. And they were just little bitty bitties the last time we did a song. So we're just gonna allow them to go ahead and sing to introduce them. Price. Uh, I'm the son of Barbara Carter. Uh, she was a member here and she passed away on Monday. Um, so we came back just to reintroduce ourselves and, 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 and to have this day and, and, and remember her. Um, this is my uh, sister, uh, Kayla Price, and uh, this is her son, uh, Caden Mobley. Let's give his family another round of applause. You're so pleasant to have them back home. We're going to go in prayer and pray for the family.
with bowed heads and with humble hearts. Father, we come once again looking toward the hills, lifting up our eyes, our spirit, and our faith toward you. First of all, Lord God, just thanking you. Thanking you for your grace and thanking you for your mercy. Thanking you for your long suffering and thanking you for the bounty of gifts that you blessed us through with through your grace. You've already proven to be better unto ourselves than we will ever be. But that's just like God. Always looking out for our best interests and bringing into manifestation the needs of our moment. We lift up this bereaved family before your presence, Lord God. You have removed from them their matriarch, their mother. But you promised when Jesus got ready to depart that he was going to leave for a little while. But he's going to send down a comforter. And this comforter is going to dwell inside of us. And he is going to lead and guide us into all good things. And he's going to bring back unto our remembrance all the things in which Jesus had saved. And one of the things that we'll never to forget is he will never leave us, nor forsake us, but he'll be with us always, even until the end of days. And as David say, when I call him, he always answered. We thank you for this bereaved family, Lord God. We thank you for the strength. We thank you for the courage. We thank you for the willpower. We thank you for the determination that they've shown through their perseverance as they continue to press their way through the separation of their mother. We thank you for them, Lord God. And we pray nothing but blessings upon them as they continue their journey, knowing that they are not alone. Not only do they have Jesus with them, but they also have a spiritual family, the Black Chapel Missionary Baptist Church family, at their heels with outreached arms ready, willing, and able to do whatever it is to assist them along their way. And we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for putting all things in place that you put in place for us to be able to work the works to suffer the need to be worked when they need to be worked, Lord God. And we pray that as they continue toward that day, that day of homegoing ceremony, that you will continue to encourage them, that you will continue to strengthen them, that you will continue to enable them to watch the works that need to be worked during the daylight of this session. In the precious name of Jesus, we do indeed pray and give thanks. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God once again for all that he has allowed to be saved and done throughout the activities of our Sunday morning worship service. We thank God for our visitors coming out sharing with the Black Chapel family, both here in sitting orders and also our viewing orders. Amen. We just thank God for it all. Let us not forget that some of you have been notified about an auxiliary meeting back in the back. As soon as there's benediction, please, ma'am, please, sir, go back in the back and you'll be greeted back there. Once again, may the Lord continue to bless and forever keep each and every one of y'all. Let us not forget on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, the homegoing ceremony, Sister Barbara Carter. Those of you who can, please, ma'am, please, sir, come out and show your love. If by chance you can't, just continue in prayer on behalf of the bereaved family. If there's nothing more, let us all please stand for our closing song and benediction.
that we meet again by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest through the night and henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You are dismissed. God bless you.